Let's cut the crap, let's get straight into it. World War 3 is a game a lot of people are wanting to play and enjoy, but not everyone knows the right streaming and recording settings to get the best out of this game and just gaming in general. So today we are going to fix that. Before we look into the OBS Studio settings, as that is the software we'll be using to record and stream World War 3, let's look into the prep that we need to make to actually make streaming and recording World War 3 a smooth and enjoyable experience. The first of these things is something I've only found out recently and has been extremely beneficial. This is disabling full screen optimization on the World War 3 client. So to do this, if you own it on Steam, right click on World War 3, go to manage, browse local files, and here you go. From here, you want to go on the World War 3 launcher.exe, properties, compatibility, disable full screen optimizations. Check this and press apply. Do not run this as administrator as due to anti-cheats and stuff like that, it can make the game just decide to not want to work for you. So just disable full screen optimization and then you're good to go. From here, you'll then want to do it on the World War 3 client as well. And finally, you want to go into World War 3, binaries, Win64, and down to the World War 3, Win64, shipping.exe properties, compatibility, disable full screen optimization. Now let's go on to the OBS Studio settings. We use OBS Studio instead of Streamlab due to extra additions and just overall, it seems to work better for me. Might not be everyone's case and these settings will still apply to anyone that does use Streamlabs OBS or any other OBS spin-offs. It's just that it will look a little different. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually add World War 3 to a game capture and actually set this up. Now there are plenty of other videos on how to set up a stream and make it look pretty, but we are going to just teach the exact basics so you guys can get in and get playing. So you want to create a new scene by pressing down the bottom left hand corner, plus call it whatever you want. World War 3. Cool. Then you go go want to go to sources, plus, and then game capture. From here, name it what you want. World War 3 game capture. Because you know you want some organization here. Make sources visible. From here, you want to go to capture specific window. Here, you want to then select the World War 3 EXE. You do have to have the game open to be able to select this. So don't make that mistake and go, oh, why can't I select it? Once done, you then just, you're good to go. That's World War 3 captured right there. Um, personally, I have capture cursor on and use anti-cheat compatibility hook enable. I believe without anti-cheat compatibility hook for um, the anti-cheat that World War 3 uses, the game will not capture. So make sure you have this check checked on. And then capture third-party overlays if you want that on. Enable it if you don't. Disable it. You know, that's personal preference there. So now that we have that enabled, we have a scene with World War 3 on. If you want to add your webcam, you can do that. But this isn't the video for that. We are going to just go straight into the settings, the bread and butter, and actually give you the settings you need. One final thing before we do that, though, is this simple tip. Disable preview. This is a lifesaver. It will just help your system not completely bottleneck out when you're streaming and will improve latency, just making a better experience overall. So with that being said, let's get into the actual settings. So you click the settings button. General, we have theme set to dark, but again, that's all personal preference. Connecting your stream. If you're streaming to Twitch, it's extremely easy. You select Twitch, you select the server you want, and then you add your account. Bish, bash, bosh, you are done. If you're on YouTube, you will need to get your key just to make things a little bit smoother. And then of course there are the YouTube like settings for individual keys. If people are interested in that and want to find out those settings for best of streaming, let me know and I'm ha more than happy to create a video on that. Twitch chat add-ons, you want better TV and Frank faces, although they are one now, you get all those funny little emotes when you have chat enabled here, but that again, personal preference. We do not ignore streaming service recommendations just because sometimes if you do bump your bitrate up too high or use some weird wacky settings, Twitch will kind of confine you and like bottleneck you into specific settings, thus making the stream look worse. Now let's go on to output. So for the streaming, you want audio track select to one. This is just the default input for audio. For audio in this, we're just going to use a very basic setup on what most people's setups are going to be made of. If you're interested in multi-track recording, Twitch VOD track, and just selecting different audio routing options for both streaming and recording, let me know. And again, that is another video I'm more than happy to make, but this is just going to be the bare basics and getting people up and running. So encoder. This video is primarily for people with NVIDIA GPUs. Now, if you are an AMD user, you may be able to get some information and 
advice out of this video, but it won't be a one-to-one -one shoe fits all kind of thing. So in Coda, we want the NVIDIA NVEC H264 new. There is an old version of the encoder don't use that there are no positives from using the old encoder if you have the option to actually select this then you want rate control as cbr bitrate is dependent on your upload speed so 6000 bitrate is six megabytes upload you would want a couple of megabytes of headroom so if you have only an upload of 10 6k should be fine but if you're on eight or lower you will want to change your bitrate depending on this Along with that, if your PC is also struggling a bit, bitrate is one of those things that you can lower to just improve overall performance. In terms of streaming, I would never recommend streaming below 2.5K bitrate. So if your upload is below three megabytes, you might be struggling a little. But bitrate, the max you can go on Twitch is 6,000. Again, YouTube has different settings, so I'm more than happy to make a video on that. But for the most part, most people stream on Twitch and these settings would still work for YouTube. They may just be a little strange keyframe interval you want at zero preset you want at quality max quality sounds all good and useful but for streaming there is actually no real benefit for it due to the way that we compress stuff when sending stuff from obs to twitch so quality is all you want you're just going to be decreasing your performance same thing with look ahead it can help make a stream and recording look smoother but in the grand scheme of things, it's really not something you need enabled and it's just going to use up more of your GPU needlessly. Psycho visual tuning, I have this enabled. Again, it's another one of those settings that does eat up that GPU. So if you're on an older GPU or not one of the higher 30 series or 20 series, you might want to disable this. This will just help smooth things out in high action games such as World War 3, which is why I have it enabled. GPU set to zero, max B frames set to two. Now, these are recording settings for using a replay buffer. This is basically a clipping system built into OBS, very similar to the likes of, say, Shadowplay or just clipping on Twitch in general. It gives you the ability to have high quality clips instead of these kind of pixelated ones that you get through the Twitch clipping service. Uh, so with this, you just want to have type standard, want to save your recording path to anywhere it doesn't matter if it's on a hard drive or an ssd with the nature of the recording for replay buffers recording format you want mp4 because you just won't be able to whack it straight out audio track will only be one for this video but again if you are using multi-track audio um, a go xlr etc that's when you might want to make use of multiple audio tracks encoder again nvec custom muxer we don't need anything for that rate control cbr Bitrate is 25,000. 20K is about all you really need for 10K, but it's just just have that little bit of extra quality that you may be able to get in. Keyframe interval is set to zero. Preset is max quality as this is recording, not streaming. You may as well get the most out of it. But if you are having any issues, just shove it down to quality and you should be good to go. Profile set to high. Look head disabled. Psycho visual tuning enabled. GPU zero. Max B frames two. Now we'll just finish the replay buffer settings just to get this over and done with. So anyone that once gets up can quickly. Replay buffer, you enable. And then this is the max replay time that you have. This is simply just how long you want it to record. So you press the button. In this example, it will record the last three minutes of footage. It's useful, but again, some people only need 30 seconds, some people want 60, or some people want even more. The longer the time though, the more demanding it will be on your GPU just because of the nature of how the replay buffer works. Along with this, you'll want to go back into general settings and enable automatically start replay buffer when streaming. This means that the replay buffer will start when you stream because you wouldn't want to have to want to save something after you've clicked started streaming at, just to find out that the replay buffer isn't enabled. That is just one of those feels bad man's moments. Finally, you'll go want to go to hotkeys and select a save replay buffer hotkey. For me, it's, one, it's the multiplication key on the numpad, but it's all personal preference there. And that is the replay buffer now dealt with. We'll go into audio next to get that. 192 is the default settings, so that is completely fine. You can use that, but if you want that audio to be just a little bit crispy, up it to 320, you know? Just sound that a little bit nicer, a little bit more crispy. Then we'll want to go on to the audio tab. General, um, general settings, sample rate is 48 kilohertz, channels is stereo. Now, global audio devices, 
don't get freaked out by this. This is fine. This is just, if you have a Go XLR, it will be a lot more spooky than someone who is just streaming and recording off their computer like normal. For this, for desktop audio, you want wherever your headphones are or just default. But usually if it, you've got a Razer Kraken headset, it will come up as Razer Kraken. HyperX Cloud Alphas, you know the deal. You just click on whatever your default headphones are and then you'll be good to go. Then you want to select mic. This will most likely either be your headset mic or a Blue Yeti, a Wave mic. You, you get the deal, you check that and then you're good to go. In terms of meters, advanced and hotkeys, there is nothing else you need to worry about here. You're all good to go. Then we go on to the video settings. Base canvas re resolution is 1920 by 1080. If you're on a 1440p monitor, set it to that. Output scaled resolution is 1664 by 936. This is the god resolution for Twitch streaming. There is nothing better than it. 1080p, you can't stream at a high enough bit rate to make the best use of it. And 720p is just a little bit murky. This though, 936, the god resolution. For downscale filter, you'll want 36 samples, no matter what your rig is, set to that. And then finally, common FPS set to 60. If you are struggling here and your PC is having issues, try lowering your FPS down to 30 and also trying 720p as your output resolution. Again, this is all just an experimentation and something that you need to find out what works best for your rig. But these are the best settings you can get for streaming on Twitch when playing World War III. Hotkeys, you can set these up as and how you like. But again, if you're using the replay buffer, make sure you have the save replay button enabled. It will just save some time. Finally, we have the advanced setting tabs. There's only one real thing you need to worry about here, changing that process priority to high. If it's on normal or anything else, you will not be getting the most out of OBS and, there will, and it will more likely stutter and have frame lags and drops and issues. So enable it. You're just doing yourself a favor there. And that is all the stream settings dealt with. So if you don't want to know how to just only record on OBS, you're good to go. It's nice knowing you. Peace. But for those that want to know about the recording settings, let's get right into that. So recording, let's get on to this. This is recording only for World War III. In terms of the actual scene setup, everything else stays the exact same. The only difference is in the recording tab, we have standard. Recording path is to an SSD. You do not want to be recording onto a hard drive. It will cause stutters and lag, and it's just not ideal. Get an SSD, get something with a fast read-write speed. It will just make everything better. Recording format, MKV. We don't want to use MP4, as if files corrupt or something, you lose the whole file. MKVs, you can save that, and it will just overall... You, you have a little bit more safety by using MKV. Audio tracks, again, enable those as you need, but for most people, you are going to only need one or two tracks, depending on how you've set up your audio. Encoder, NVEC new again, rescale output, we don't need to worry about, custom muxes, we don't need to worry about. Rate control, CQP, this is a different style of rate control to what we usually use for streaming and then using the replay buffer, and is based off a quality level. Now the CQ level is the quality level that we use. The lower the number, the better the recording. 22 is kind of the golden standard view. You don't need to go below to get good quality for uploading to YouTube. Uh, I personally record at 20 simply due to the fact that I do sometimes post elsewhere and want these higher lossless files just in case I do want to do anything fancy. But 22 is kind of that number that you want to stick around. Anything below 20 is just overkill and you're just going to kill your file size. And the higher you go, the worse the quality. I would not say to go above 30, but again, it's all dependent on your rig and what works for you. Preset, I would say max quality, but I've been looking at my recording files and the difference between max quality and quality is just so little that I just don't see the point of it. Bumping up my GPU utilization just for a little bit of quality. Profile, again, is set to high. Look ahead, I, again, I don't need it. And psycho visual tuning is useful for fast paced games such as World War 3. GPU set zero, max P frames set to two. Now, audio stays the exact same as what we had for streaming. And then finally, video. Only difference here is we change this to 1080p, frames stay at 60. Advanced and hotkeys are exactly the same, and that is all good. Now, finally, you're probably wondering, oh, this MKV thing, what is it? Now, the only step more you need to do for an MP4 is remuxing. To do this, you go up to file in the top left, go down to remux recordings. I'm aware this is behind my camera, so I do apologize. Press remux recordings, you select 
the dots, you go to the file wherever it is located, and you'll find an MKV folder file. Click on this, press Remux, it will slowly work its way through. And then in that same folder, there will be MP4 versions of this. And you can then just throw that into whatever your editing software is and edit away. It's just a little extra step, but for that guaranteed safety and less likely corruption, I would take that any day of the year. But that is all guys. Hopefully that is a nice, useful video for you to be able to stream and record World War 3 on OBS Studio. If you have any questions, just put them down in the comments below. If I did help you, drop a sub, leave a like, you know the usual YouTuber shit. And again, if anyone does need any extra videos made on either audio routing and multi-truck audio or streaming on YouTube, let me know. I'm more than happy to do that. But I'll see you guys when I see you guys. Peace out, Tulu, and goodbye.